What is up guys, Andy Forrest, the Runner here, and today we're going to be talking all about the New Balance Fuel Cell TC after 100 miles. Today's 10 mile run took us over and beyond the 100 mile mark in the New Balance Fuel Cell TC, meaning today we can talk all about how this thing has performed over its first 100 miles, the general wear and tear of the shoe, how it's holding up, the types of runs we've done in it, and of course how I'm going to be using it moving forward. So if you're excited for today's video guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and we'll start off with how we've been using it. So New Balance market this shoe as basically your long distance best friend training buddy. It's obviously the smaller baby brother or sister to the upcoming RC Elite, which is really exciting. I'm certainly going to be grabbing a pair of those. And I love that concept that they are now bringing out uh, training partners to the racing shoes. I know it's kind of all marketing and I'm a sucker for a bit of marketing, but I like the concept that if you have a racing shoe, you're going to have a training shoe that's going to feel very, very similar. And it's going to be hopefully like home from home, slipping your foot from this into the RC Elite when it comes out. And that's kind of exactly how I've been using this thing majoritively. I think most of my runs in this have been over 10 miles or over 8 miles, 9 miles, 10 miles and over. I've done a couple of really good quality, relatively quick long runs in the shoe to put it through its paces. I really wanted to find that sweet spot as to where uh, this shoe will sit in my rotation. As I said, we'll talk about at the end. So I've done an 18 and a 20 miler, running at a relatively steady pace, 6.30 per mile and 6.40 per mile on the other one. And I've done some hill work in the shoe as well. So I've tried to give it a good all-round uh, mixture of usage, uh, trying to find out where it's going to fit in, as I said, with my lineup. And with that all being said, and as I said, we'll cover the aspects of the good and the bad and the ugly at the end. How is the wear and tear holding up on the shoe? Well, first things first to say before I go into showing you anything is that despite the aesthetic crinkles in the uh, fuel cell midsole along here and along here, it feels brand new. It really does. It really does not feel like it's got 100 miles in it. And that's a really refreshing thing to say, especially when you're going to pay the price that you pay for this shoe, because it's a pricey shoe. It really is. Um, but on the whole, it is holding up really well. The upper as a whole, we've got this suede around the top here, which just goes down the eyelet chain swoops around the back here and connects on there and the rest of it is just a nice thin lightweight upper material with some printed dot uh, New Balance logo patterns on the top there and as you can see absolutely no snags whatsoever. I do feel as these running shoes advance and technology advances the general wear and tear on the top and the midsole and all of that, uh, bar some midsoles flattening out, the kind of, uh, all of this, it doesn't really get too damaged too quickly. I remember back in the day, I used to be able to put holes in the end of the, my shoes because uh, the material would just disintegrate, but I haven't had that in any shoes of late. And this thing is no exception. It's just holding up really well. If anything, it's getting comfier. Fuel cell midsole is a fantastic midsole. My first experience of that was in the Propel. I absolutely loved it. And with a carbon plate in this shoe, it just firms up that midsole just 
perfectly. The Propel could at times feel a little bit sloppy. It was that perfect easy day shoe, but it certainly wasn't a shoe where if you wanted to pick up the pace, you could. I never found I could pick up the pace in that shoe. This thing is completely the opposite. So the general wear and tear of the thing is great. The comfort is 10 out of 10 in terms of when you put your foot in. There's a couple of gripes that I have with it, which we'll talk to you about in a second, but on the whole, wear and tear wise, absolutely super. Okay, on to the pros and the cons of this shoe. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, you're paying a premium price tag for this shoe. And for me, for a long distance run, I've had a few comments in, uh, asked, is it worth it? Is it a shoe that they could use? I think my simple answer to the question that I've come to, it's taken me a while to get to this point, but my simple answer is this. If you are a long run warrior, like I am, I love my long runs. If you're a marathon trainer, if you train for a good couple of marathons a year, and you really do like to put in good blocks of training, then yes, it is. Because actually what this is gonna do, is gonna give you comfort and confidence. One thing this shoe has done for me is breathe confidence into my running. And I'll explain why shortly, uh, but it is just a really good shoe. I have found, and we'll talk about the cons now, before we talk about the positives, I found that the first downside of this shoe is I just cannot run easy in it. And that's not me saying like with the Nova Blast, I can't run easy, it just makes me want to move fast. I mean, I can't run easy in this shoe, it, it feels awkward. It feels uncomfortable. And as I alluded to in my first impressions, it kind of feels like on some way, and I know you can't see it, and I can't see it if I look directly down the line there, because the midsole under here, uh, sorry, the outsole looks flat. But underfoot when you're running, <clears throat> excuse me, it feels like the carbon plate is curved. It's like bowing. And so I will say it again, it's like when you put ice skates on and you're walking from the bench, when you put your ice skates on to the rink, the ice rink, when you're wobbling all over the place until you get onto the ice rink and then you start gliding. That first initial few steps when you're wobbly, it's the only way I can describe it. That's kind of how it feels in this shoe. And when you're running at slower pace and I feel you're not engaging the carbon plate as you should do, like the carbon plate is obviously going to propel you forward and give you that extra momentum, extra energy return. When you're not utilising that, its shoe feels clunky. I'm not going to lie, it feels clunky. So after 100 miles, yeah, I can safely say that now that I've got to this point, I'm not going to be using this thing for any more easier day runs. Maybe some steadier runs, but certainly not the easier day runs. So that's number one. And the second thing is the lockdown in the shoe. It's been an awkward one for me. Um, I have started off and I got hot spots in the balls of my feet just here. Okay. Um, and as you can see, in terms of wear and tear, I didn't show you. I realised I didn't show the outsole uh, back in the previous clip. Again, looks absolutely perfect. Whatever this blue rubber outsole is, it's fan flipping tastic in terms of durability <clears throat> but in terms of the lockdown it's just not it's not quite there you know like when someone produces a shoe this is how I feel about the shoe someone produces an absolute diamond of a shoe but they just leave out a couple of little snags and you think oh if you'd have just spent another few hours finishing the project it would be a mind-blowing 10 out of 10 shoe but sadly you've made it an 8 out of 10 that's that's this, that's this, and I hope with some refinements in another future version, this thing could be amazing. So the lockdown, the heel counter area is beautiful. Perfect plushness, not too thick, not too thin. It's the tongue. The tongue is too thin, and what they haven't done, when you have a very thin tongue, there's a fine balance of being able to get a good lockdown or not. Only a few shoes that I've run in with thin tongues have managed it. This one has not. So what happened to me is in my right foot, if you ever watch my run over shots where I run over the camera, you'll notice my right foot turns out a little bit. I have an imbalance on that right side. Some of my adductor muscles are weak or glutes, whatever it is, which I'm working on in the gym when I can get back to the gym. It's a heck of a lot better than what it was. But I do notice if I don't get a good lockdown, my feet slide in the shoe. And this is the left foot, but what would happen is if it was a right foot, my feet would slide to the inside of the shoe and I would land on the inside of the shoe. So when I was doing that in the first instance, I thought, right, I need to get the lockdown sorted. I was getting the sliding and I was getting the burning feeling on the bottom of my feet. So I used the extra eyelet chain here. Happy days. Did a long run in it. Burning sensation on the bottom of my feet went away. Absolutely brilliant. Two runs later, pain in the top of my foot where the tongue was slipping down and the laces were digging into the top of my foot. Tried it, persisted for a couple of days, 
it's carried on. So I had to remove the extra eyelet and now I'm having to settle for the fact that I just have a bit of a sloppy fit. Now for me it's minor, for a lot of you guys it will be major and with the price tag that it is, it is a major deal breaker for a lot of you. For me I'm just going to carry on running it. When I get on the long run I just don't notice it but on those easy runs it is very very noticeable and very very frustrating. So those are my two gripes with the shoe. Other than that it is, it is almost perfection. When you are running fast on the long run, this thing just takes you away, takes your breath away. The carbon plate, the way that it engages when you start to move is smooth. It is brilliant. I was running paces I never thought I could hit in a steady long run in the shoe and 20 miles felt like a breeze. I took my feet out of the shoe. They did not feel beat up. My legs did not feel beat up. Nothing was wrong at all. So, bar those two snags, it is an absolute gem of a shoe. So with all that rambling out of the way, how am I going to use this shoe moving forward? Well, as I've just alluded to, I'm certainly not going to be using it for the easy days. I'm going to be saving this shoe now for speed work and for long runs. It is as simple as that. In this base building block, I haven't been able to put any decent tempo interval work in, but I did use it on the hills. It was okay, but it wasn't as good as the Nova Blast, and I think that was the carbon plate kind of almost working against me trying to go up a hill. It felt a little bit odd, but I have done a couple of tempo miles, really kicked on uh, with some steady pace, and it feels phenomenal. So basically, moving forward, I'm gonna be reserving this shoe for the long run, and I'm gonna be reserving this shoe for some speed work. I'm excited to put some decent speed work in, which will be coming over the next or three weeks and I'm pretty tempted to do some sort of time trial in the shoe. Whether it's a 5k or a 10k time trial I'm pretty confident that I will do that. So that's how I'm going to be using this shoe moving forward. But as always I want to know how you guys are using the shoe. If you've bought the shoe how are you finding it? What are your gripes? Or do you absolutely love it? I know a lot of you guys love it. I've seen in some of the comments in some of the other videos. It is your favourite shoe at the moment. I've got to say it's an absolute banger. If they can sort out these issues in the next version and then this would be a Nova Blast contender for my favourite shoe, but the Nova Blast still pips it. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.